Thanks very much, Lass, Karen Corla. Um, we in People Before Profit welcome the passing of the Nature Restoration Law. If we had a member of the European Parliament, and clearly we hope we have at least one member of the European Parliament after the next European elections, well then, yes, we would have attempted to try to strengthen it, um, but we would have then uh, voted for it. Why? Very simple. It's been laid out by a bunch of people, so at least the, the basic facts are not apparently in dispute in this debate, but the consequences of those facts clearly are. Why? Because we're in the middle of an intense biodiversity emergency, a sixth mass extinction event. Why? Because Europe-wide, 81% of the ha habitats that were supposed to be protected by the Habitats Directive 30 years ago are not in good condition now. Why? Because Europe is a disaster for biodiversity and Ireland is at the very bottom of the pile in Europe. We're the 13th worst country in the world for biodiversity, a far cry from the greenwashed image that the Department of Agriculture, using public money, attempts to portray, trying to create the impression that big fields just full of grass everywhere is somehow how nature is meant to be in this country. Native forests once covered 80% of our land, but have now been reduced to a measly 1.5%. Almost none of our protected nature sites have effective conservation or management plans in place. There's massive biodiversity loss and damage even in the crown jewels of Irish nature, like Killarney and Connemara National Parks. We like to give out, correctly, the whole world should give out about the destruction of the Amazon rainforest, the lungs of the earth. But we have done, um, and it's not all of us in it to the same extent, but it has been done to our uh, equivalent that by draining, burning, extracting from our bogs. In light of all of that, the key nature restoration law proposal to restore 20% of land and sea areas by 2030 seems extremely modest. It is the absolute minimum that we should be doing to avoid further biodiversity meltdown. We regret that the final version that was passed was watered down a lot from the original version. We regret that, as you see again and again in terms of uh, European proposals, you have massive lobbying operations. I mean, something like there's hundreds of lobbyists, I think thousands of lobbyists for every member of the European uh, Parliament, and massive pressure was put on politicians by those profit-hungry lobbyists for intensive agriculture, unsustainable fishing, and the plantation forest uh, industry. They engaged in un un in un in an unprecedented campaign of scaremongering around this law, um, and they succeeded in having uh, the proposal watered down. Unfortunately, Sinn Féin bowed to that pressure. They voted alongside Fine Gael's colleagues in the European People's Party, and hand in glove with the climate and biodiversity denying far right, to try to block even this watered down version of the nature restoration law. They went along with the lobbyists who invented all kinds of dire consequences for food production and food security, all of which were complete nonsense. The truth, as a coalition of 3,000 actual scientists came together to say, is the exact opposite. It's a pity that Sinn Féin chose to follow the lobbyists rather than the science and the public on this because 97% of respondents to a public consultation on this law supported legally binding EU restoration targets across all ecosystems. So we know that nature restoration is popular as well as ecologically essential. Sinn Féin needs to follow the science, listen to the people, not the lobbyists uh, on this. And if they did, they would realise that protecting biodiversity and restoring nature will not undermine food production and food security because nature and biodiversity are the whole basis of food security. It's absolutely true that no farmers, no food. But it's also true, no nature, no food. Without nature and functioning ecosystems, eventually we will have no food production. The collapse of biodiversity, uh, the consequence is 
you know, you, you, you lose out in terms of the number of insects and so on, the consequence is going to be a crisis in terms of uh, food production in this country and worldwide. That's the trajectory that we are on towards absolute catastrophe. So we need to take a long-term view of this instead of what Sinn Féin and most of the leadership of farmers' organisations in this country and across Europe have chosen to take by swallowing and regurgitating the lies of industry lobbyists, choosing to cut off their nose to spite their face. Rather than seeing this as a positive opportunity to reward farmers for farming in an environmentally friendly way, instead they sought to block it uh, and to water it down. For years, this is the, the truth, um, and farmers are not to be blamed for it, we, we paid farmers to degrade nature by overgrazing sheep in ecologically sensitive areas, by overstocking the best agricultural land, and by overexpanding the national herd. That, that was done by farmers responding to incentives created by uh, the, the state. That's the, that's the truth. Uh, governments have responsibility for that. But that doesn't mean we should continue in that direction. We are in the midst of a climate and biodiversity emergency that is not just causing the sixth mass extinction event, but is threatening our own survival and that of the human race. You know, ultimately, hundreds of millions or billions of people are faced with death worldwide unless we act now to stop it. And so we need to change the nature of the incentives. We need to incentivise farmers uh, not to bring us further over these catastrophic cliffs, but instead to richly reward them for restoring nature and reducing carbon emissions. <coughs> Excuse me. This has to happen on a massive, unprecedented scale. It isn't about piecemeal environmental schemes which are tagged onto a whole model of agriculture that is based on industrialised agriculture that is deeply damaging to both biodiversity and the climate. Instead, we need a rational, democratically planned, sustainable food system where restoring nature, protecting biodiversity would become one of the main sources of farmers' income and in many cases would become the main source. We need farmers to save the future of our planet, and we need to make a political decision to pay them handsomely to do that. And that, for me, is the major flaw of this law. It doesn't justify voting uh, against it, but the work now needs to be done on it, is that it does not specify the ways in which small farmers in particular will be paid to carry out the vital work of nature restoration. You need to listen to farmers on this, and we need to work with them to come up with the best ways of achieving this. And crucially, we need to ensure that it is small farmers, rather than the big dairy farmers and the agri-food industry, that reap the benefits of nature restoration. There needs to be a massive redistribution of wealth and resources in agriculture, just like in the rest of the economy. Thanks, Chair.